Barn tour was an important aspect of the Round Barn Festival. This was a tour of many round barns around the Fulton County area. Research indicates that the first round barn built here in Fulton County was the Weidman Cox Round Barn. Joseph Weidman served in the 144th Ohio Infantry in the Civil War. He got his land from the government as part of his military compensation. Elmer Weidman, son of Joseph Weidman, married Lola Kindig and, and bought 80 acres a little south of the home place. When Elmer decided to build a new barn, he consulted the Kindig relatives because C.V. Kindig had a contracting business. They had seen plans for round barns in the Farmer's Guide and the Indiana Farmer, so they decided to build a round barn in 1910. After building Elmer's round barn, the other Weidman brothers liked it so well they had a round barn built there to access the road also in 1910. After people saw these beautiful round barns, other farmers wanted round barns too. So the Kindigs were, were on their way to a place in history as the round barn builders. Because of them, Fulton County has more round barns than any other county in Indiana and is the round barn capital of the world. First stop of the tour was at the round barn located at Mill Creek Golf Course, better known as the Weidman Garrick Barn, which was originally located on Road 100 North, just east of 900 East in Henry Township. It was the second barn built in Fulton County by C.V. Kendig and Sons Construction. A $130,000 grant from the Fulton County Community Foundation paid most of the cost of the dismantling, moving, and reconstruction at its location on East 9th Street in, in 2001. This was done by Amos Swartz Construction. The barn was once red and is, is red again in its new location. It has a wood shingled roof and is 70 feet in diameter. The lower level of the barn has been the pro shop for Mill Creek Golf Course since 2005. The next stop on the tour highlighted the Heimball Barn. It is owned by the Heimball Family in Incorporation. The corporation was formed in order to keep the round barn and farm in the family. The original owner was John Heimball and it was built in 1914 by the Kindigs. It is 72 feet in diameter with a 20 foot shed around half of the barn. There are 38 stanchions for milking cows. There were also two silos. Most of, the tra most of the track around the milking area was used to carry the bucket when cleaning the barn and can still be seen, as well as two cement bases for the silos. Timber for the barn consisted of sycamore and elm, which was taken to the Talma sawmill. The gravel for the foundation was taken from a nearby creek to make the concrete for the foundation. The foundation is five blocks high. Heimball insisted that they be filled with concrete and there is little or no evidence of any cracking yet today. The next stop on the tour was not a round barn, but yet was a historical site here in Fulton County. It was the Prill School, which was built in 1876 on land do donated by Mr. and Mrs. John Prill. The school, which was District Number 3 in Henry Township, was located northeast of Athens. One teacher taught all eight grades. The students ranged in age from 6 to 18. When the school was opened, there was no plumbing. Water had to be carried in wooden buckets by the pulpits from the John Perrill residence. Later, a well was drilled and two brick toilets were built, one for girls and one for the boys. The school was heated by a wood-burning wood stove. The wood was contracted from local farmers during the summer. The older, older boys were often called on to carry the wood in and help build the fire on, on the stove. A water bucket, dipper, and wash basin were kept at the back of the room and were used by everyone. However, boys had a mirror and a comb on one side of the room and the girls had one on the other side. The children walked to school, sometimes as far as one and a half miles. They carried their lunch to school. Lunches were kept in the cloakroom and often during the winter their lunch would be frozen by noon. The nearest high schools were in Rochester and Akron, about six miles. Some of the pupils were able to commute to high school by a milk train that stopped in Athens. As it was compulsory to attend school until age 16, some pupils had to remain in the eighth grade several years even though they passed because they were too young to quit and had no transportation into Rochester or Akron. The curriculum of the school at the time consisted of reading, spelling, writing, arithmetic, history, geography, philosophy and health. The last year of Prill School was 1924 slash 1925. Then for many years the building was used for a, for storing grain and farm machinery. In the spring of 1971 some former students had a vision of a reconstructed one-room rural school of the 19th century. 
Fulton County's first annual Ramborn Festival was held July 16th, 17th, and 18th in 1971. One of the most popular stops of the tour was the restored one-room Pruill School. The Pruill School Museum Association was formed in the fall of 1971. The association had as its purpose the preservation of the 95-year-old building, a landmark of Fulton County's pioneer heritage. Visiting the school is like taking a step back in time. The next stop on the tour was the Jerry Calloway Barn. The Jerry Calloway Barn was built in 1914-1915 by the Kindick family and is still being used by the Calloway family who are still engaged in farming some 1,000 acres. It is actually in Miami County instead of Fulton County, just across the county line. The barn measures 86 feet in diameter and you can fit 120 head of cattle and 6,000 bales of hay inside with room to spare. The, bar was re the barn was re-roofed in 1987 and there are shapes of a cow, pig, chicken, and sheep showing on the roof of the barn. The barn is one of the, lar one of the largest barns you will ever, ever see and it took 10 men in an entire year to build. The original barn had no posts in it. The posts have been added to keep the roof from settling. There is a silo in the middle and it is still in use. The silo boards are 40 feet long. Water is run in with the silage, but the silo doesn't leak because it is a water. The barn has its own well that is about six to eight feet deep to water the livestock. The bottom of the barn is put together with pegs and the upper part by nails. All original materials to assemble the barn came from within a five mile radius. There originally was a cupola made of glass that collapsed and broke a beam that was never replaced. Pegs were pounded in the place in the places the glass came from and it has worked well all these years since. All of the original horse stalls are still being used. A corn crib was built in the center of the barn but was only used the first year because the corn spoiled from the moisture from the animals. The bottom boards have been removed from the crib and a feed trough has been put in to utilize space. The last stop of the, of the tour was to the Historical Society where the Paxton Leedy Barn is now located. The Paxton Leedy Barn is located in Richland Township on US 31 just north of Road 650 North. It has been located on Old US 31 about one, half mile south of State Road 110. It was built in 1924 by the Kindig Builders which makes it the last one built in Fulton County. Fire destroyed a barn there in September of that year and the new, bar, new round bank barn was built to replace it. It is now a white barn in quite good repair. It was believed that a round barn could be built quicker since winter was approaching the, the Kindigs and some neighbors took on the job. Bert Leedy says that there were as many as 40 good neighbors working on the construction of, of this barn during some of the days. The barn, 60 feet in diameter, had a poured concrete foundation and a green roof. The wall and the floor required a carload of cement. The wall was poured by the neighbors in three days, which was quite, quite a feat in those days. The barn originally was used to ha house farm animals. For many years, the lower level sheltered as many as eight horses, 30 sheep, eight cows, eight calves, and eight feeder steers. After harvest time, the top of the barn w would be filled with 50 or 60 loads of hay and 10 to 12 loads of straw for bedding. There was a wheat bin which held 30 bushels of grain for feed. It was owned by Harold Patridge from 1972 to 1975 and then by Larry Paxton from 1975 to 1989. On September 1st, 1989, a tornado took the roof off, so Paxton donated the damaged barn to the Fulton County Historical Society.